Hello everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Scary Spikes and uh, today we're going to be playing around with some ships of a different kind. This is World of Warships and this is my comprehensive beginner's guide for new players. Before we get started, a huge thanks to all of my wonderful channel members and patrons. Thank you so much you guys for helping me out and keeping the lights on here at the studio. If you'd like to help me directly, there's some links in the description. You can become a channel member here on YouTube or a patron over on my Patreon and I really, really do appreciate your direct support. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. All right, everybody. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. I'm sure it goes without saying. So, hey, go ahead and grab yourself a snack, a drink, sit back and relax and follow along. I will also have some uh, timestamps down in the description below as well as in the seek bar. So feel free at your discretion to jump forward or back wherever you like to get the most out of this video. If you're a new player, you can head over to the link in the description below. Click on that and then that'll bring you over to this page where you can click on this shiny orange button and sign up for an account of your own. It's free to join and you get a bunch of awesome bonuses and rewards as you progress throughout the game. If you run into a little red text box at the top of the form that you use to create your account, telling you that there was an error, don't worry about it. There's a very high likelihood that there was actually no error and the error is just on Wargaming's website. You can double check to make sure that your account has been created by heading over to the registered email address that you put in and then you should receive a confirmation to confirm your email address as well as a welcome email from Wargaming. Now, I would really consider making an account on Wargaming's website and downloading the game directly from them. If you go back to the form after making sure that you got those emails and then press F5, you should actually have this page here, which will have a direct link to download the game. The reason why I would recommend doing it this way as opposed to going through Steam is that sometimes online games through Steam create an account for you and basically bypass this entire part, which seems like it's very convenient, but then when you're trying to log in on different devices or different computers that's when it makes it difficult because you'll always have to go through steam to be able to access your account so just go ahead and do it manually through the website follow this link and then that way you can get the rewards but you'll also be able to log in to a wargaming launcher on any pc going forward all right so let's go ahead and start with the ui now you're not going to see all of this when you start playing when you start playing you're going to be very very gradually introduced to different areas of the game through something called access levels and the narrator will let you know how to get to the next access level and what you've unlocked once you get to that access level. So for example, he might say something like to unlock the next access level, play two battles. And then all you'll need to do is just to play through two battles and you'll unlock that next access level. So there's going to be a lot of information on the left hand side and right hand side that you're not going to recognize right away and that's okay. One of the things that you definitely will recognize is the stuff on the top, which is pretty much always the same, as well as uh, some of the tabs on the top, more of which will appear depending on the situation. For example, unlocking access levels or becoming a member of a clan. So starting at the very bottom, you've got your ship carousel. Now you're not going to be able to swoop through it like I'm able to with my mouse wheel here, as I've got uh, a few too many ships, I think. But once you do have enough, you're going to be able to swoop through these with your mouse wheel scrolling up and down. And the really nice thing about World of Warships is that you can simply mouse over most things and it'll give you a lot of detail as to what those things are. So here in this case, we're getting information about our ships. We're getting their tiers. We're getting their names, their nations, the XP that we have on that ship, the date of manufacture, the lore, and some basic stats. Now, if we click on one of those, like the Shimikaze over here, as you can see with the beautiful white skin, then that is going to give us more information, including uh, who the captain or the commander of the ship is, the types of economic bonuses that we have selected. And then we can actually click through and get a lot more information about the armor layout and all of the other stats of the ship. So if you click through here, for example, survivability, you mouse over that, it'll give you more information. Artillery, if we mouse over that, it's gonna give us uh, information about our main artillery, our main battery and things like that so this is a great way to get information about all the different types of ships and the best thing about this is that you can actually preview ships just like this in the port using the tech tree which is up here which we're going to take a look at in just a little bit one of the other things that you should note about the main menu here the carousel and everything is that you do also have a filter 
that's going to be right up here to the top left of the carousel and it's going to give you some filtering options which is really great especially if you have quite a few ships so you're going to have the option to choose your tier so for example if i want to only see tier six ships i can go ahead and click that and now i can see that that is the only tier six ship that i own uncheck that and then we've got everything back now the tiers go from tier one the lowest tier to tier 10 and then we also have tier 11 effectively uh, also known as super ships and these are quite a little bit uh, more difficult to attain uh, but you can do that through quite a bit of grinding and they are very impressive indeed so this is a great way to look for a specific uh, tier of ship we also have type of ships so these are going to be the icons that are going to represent the different types of ships in the game currently we only have five types we have submarines which are not a permanent addition to the game I'll explain that perhaps in another video. We do also have destroyers. Uh, we also have cruisers. We have battleships and we have aircraft carriers, which are really cool. Now you have uh, your nations as well. Uh, and then so if you click on any of these, for example, if I click on Japan, you'll see that now only my Japanese ships are showing. And then if I unclick Japan, then now I have access to my full roster of ships. So uh, if you're looking for a specific nation that you want to play and you don't want to go through all that, that's a great way to do that as well. And one thing that you should notice, anything that's dim, like for example, Spain here is uh, dim uh, or uh, the EU uh, or rather uh, the Netherlands here is dim for me. Um, then that basically just means that I don't own any ships from that particular nation. So that gives you an at a glance look of sort of what nations all of your ships are from. Now, you also have a special tab here. This gives you information about different types of ships that you have in your collection. So, for example, if I wanted to just find only my premium ships and not my tech tree ships, uh, again, more on that a little bit later, then I can just go ahead and click on that. And then there you go. Those are all my premium ships. So very, very easy to use. Very simple. And again, if you want to know what something is, just go ahead and mouse over it and it'll tell you in pretty good detail. If you have any questions, by the way, you can also leave them down in the comments below and myself or maybe a member of the community will be able to get back to you and let you know. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the menu on the left. Now, like I was saying with the uh, different phases that you're going to be going through when you're first starting the game, you might not be at the correct access level to unlock some of these, but they will start to appear as you gain access levels. So that's just something to keep in mind. One thing that you're going to be noticing quite a bit is the containers tab here. We'll go ahead and click on that. And what that's going to offer you is to get some containers throughout the day, as well as to open up containers that you might have gotten as a result of completing missions or special events that happen from time to time. Now, just for the daily stuff, there's three to grind out for the day. So you can see that we are currently at zero XP for the day. If we get to 2000, that's going to get us our first container. 12,500 XP will get us our second and 37K will get us our third. Now, at the very beginning, especially without economic bonuses like extra XP and stuff like that, this is going to be quite a bit more difficult to attain. So don't worry if you can't get past the second or even the third container for the day. It's totally okay. You'll definitely get there. I would just focus on trying to level up my ships and move through the tech tree, as I'll show you in a little bit. And that's going to get you uh, a lot faster to a ship that's capable of uh, basically getting the XP to max yourself out for the day. So next we're gonna talk about combat missions and uh, combat missions are great because they're passive ways to gain rewards for just playing the game. And as you can see here, we've got a number of different categories on the left hand side that we can click through and each of them will be showing different amounts of uh, missions that we can complete. Some of these are time locked or you have to complete this mission before you get to the next one and so on. But what's great is if you have multiple missions that are looking for you to, let's say, deal X amount of damage, then both of those will be counted at the same time and you don't have to worry about completing them consecutively, uh, which is great. So these are awesome because basically we're just getting rewards for playing the game. And there's a variety of different missions here available for different playstyles. So whether you prefer PvP or PvE or a little bit of both, you're going to find that you can really progress and find a good sense of progression and satisfaction from the game as a result of these little missions. So last but not least on the little menu over on the left hand side here, I do want to talk to you guys about the premium shop as well as the armory because inevitably that is going to come up and I just wanted to give you guys some information and some stern warnings uh, about what to do and what not to do in these areas because it is a free to play game but it is also very easy to spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars if you're not careful and I mean hey if you've got the money and you just want to do it 
then by all means, whatever cream is your Twinkie. But just be very careful because it can be quite easy to spend money in this game and to get carried away. So the differences between these really is that the premium shop is uh, more centered around spending just real money. So that includes buying ships for money, buying doubloons, which is the premium currency in the game, as you can see up here on the top left or top, top right hand corner of the screen. I apologize. Um, and basically just buying packs and boxes and stuff like that just with money. Now, what's kind of interesting about that is that there's a lot of companies out there that will have a bunch of different currencies, make you buy those currencies with real money so that there's more of a disconnect between how much money, actual money, you're spending on things like loot boxes if that's what you want to get. Now, what I like about uh, what Wargaming is doing, they do that as well in the armory. But if you go into the uh, premium shop here, if we, uh, for example, have a look at the ships tab here, you can see that if I wanted to buy a Giuseppe Verdi, it's going to be exactly that price. And I'm in Canada, so that's why it's in Canadian dollars. But I like that because then that tells me exactly what I'm paying instead of being like, hey, uh, so you need to buy X number of doubloons with this much money. And then you use the doubloons to buy ship passes and you can, you know, use a ship pass to get. No, it's not like that. I mean, uh, you, you can do it that way with the balloons. But if you go into the premium shop, what you see is what you get. And this I really like. I really wish that more companies did this because, you know, I think if people like the game and trust the developer, they're going to be wanting to spend the money anyway to help support them and the development of the game. So, you know, having the transparency and the honesty in the shop is definitely something that uh, I think speaks volumes uh, with respect to the developers. So kudos to them for that. Now, the armory is going to be very similar to that, but it is going to be a little bit different in the sense that it's going to be focusing a little bit more on events and uh, different kinds of things. Now, you are going to be focusing on spending doubloons as well as other types of currency in the armory as opposed to real or new money. And so uh, that is something to keep in mind. Sometimes there are events that are going on which will allow you to get some stuff for free, usually on the bottom right hand corner. And for like 150 doubloons for some some stuff on the bottom left hand corner. Um, in both cases, these are usually going to be like random bundles. So if you click on this, you can see that um, this these are basically the bundles. And each time, each day that you come back to get one, you could randomly get any one of these. And then you can just continue to come through day by day until you get all of them if that's what you want to do. So you can see that we've got... Uh, everything here you get a little bit of doubloons and stuff for free as well some money some some boxes and stuff like that so that's kind of cool now uh very quickly on the left hand side uh you're going to have the featured tab so this is going to show you anything that is relevant uh anything that is uh sort of current for the current events that are going on so if that's what you want to check out uh, you can do that in the featured tab you do also have the ships tab and uh, as with the main menu, you do have a very comprehensive way to uh, find specific ships here with the filter. Um, so you can do that. Now, uh, you do also have some ships that are available for doubloons, uh, but you do also have coal and steel. I'll explain that in just a little bit. Uh, moving on, you can get yourself specific commanders uh, in this section right here. And some of them you can buy for um, by by buying uh, by using coal. Rather, I apologize. Some of them will cost doubloons and so on if you go down here you've got <laughs> essentially your loot box page i would just kind of completely ignore this altogether because i don't believe in loot boxes i think you should be buying you know what you want to buy and knowing exactly what you're getting so no matter what game it is i'm sorry war gaming uh, i'm just not a big fan of loot boxes i don't like them i understand that they make a lot of money for companies uh that that use them but i just don't believe in them and i don't like them at all moving on uh, we've got our uh, customizations. So uh, these are going to be a bunch of things in here. Uh, you can use credits as well as other currencies to purchase things. Uh, at the very top here, we've got economic bonuses. These you can attach to different ships to get extra credits per battle, extra XP per battle, commander XP and free XP per battle as well. And then there are some very specific upgrades here that you can buy that you cannot buy for credits as you can with most upgrades. Uh, and then you can buy these with coal, which is a little bit harder to get. Uh, flags or signal flags are going to be uh, little bonuses that you can attach to your ship that do different things. You can purchase them here. And then you've got a number of different special camouflages, emblems, and things like that that you can buy down here. So these are all ways that you can customize your experience. 
Now, moving down, you have the Naval Community tab. Now, uh, you guys remember from the beginning of the video, I asked you guys that, that if you wanted to create a new account, that you use my referral code. And this is the benefit that I get out of it. Of course, you get a bunch of cool stuff as well. But I get these things called Community Tokens. And uh, you can get those as well by watching uh, World of Warship streams and getting involved in the community and so on. And then you can spend those tokens for a variety of different rewards on this screen right here. So the Research Bureau, if you've ever played Call of Duty, is a little bit like Prestige. Basically, what it allows you to do is uh, if you end up researching and purchasing Tier 1 through Tier 10 of a particular line of ships, you can go through the Research Bureau to sell all of those ships and reset that line of ships. And when you go through them again, unlocking and purchasing them, you get Research Bureau points. And then when you have those points, you can use them to purchase a variety of ships and or special upgrades and or special signal flags. So again, this is something that I will make a video down the road if you guys are interested in that. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and move on. And we have the seven seas. This is currently one of the events that's going on. So towards the bottom of this, you're going to be getting uh, mostly event uh, sort of pages to show you the different types of events that are going on. And then of course, uh, there is also this little game of Battleship, which I think is kind of adorable. Not okay, we, we lost that one. One more time, one more time. Ah, oh, we lost that one again. All right, one more time. Third time is a charm. All right, we got it that time. <laughs> so by doing that, you get some special points. Again, this is a, an event that's going on at the moment, but you can go ahead and click through there. And at the very bottom, again, you have uh, sort of the equivalent of the premium shop down there. Now, if we go back up to the Featured tab, you'll see that you do have your currencies on the top right-hand corner of the screen. Some of these, like the Festive Tokens and the Strike Passes, are going to be temporary currencies. Those are currently the ones in place for the uh, WoW's seven-year anniversary event. But then you have your Steel, your Coal, your doubloons, and uh, the doubloons, as I mentioned, that's going to be your premium currency. Uh, that's what you can purchase with real money. Then you have your coal, which you can use, uh, as I said before, to buy ships and special upgrades that uh, you can get through uh, completing missions and doing events and stuff like that. And steel is very much like that, but much harder to get and also offers better rewards. So that's going to be the premium shop and the armory. Let's go ahead and move right along. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the top menu now. On the very top left-hand corner, we've got the main menu. You've got help settings exit game back to game and video tutorials these are pretty great but i am going to create some more especially with some interest so definitely keep your eyes out for that and make sure to subscribe and over here we've got the emblem and the patch that's going to allow you to customize it now this is going to appear beside your name in every game so you can make this whatever you like you can unlock all of these just by playing the game uh, completing missions and doing event missions and stuff like that as well you can also get some of these out of containers which is great now i've got the polish navy emblem uh, insignia here as well as the red and white patch i really like that i'm going to go ahead and keep that since uh, that is where i'm from originally and the polish navy is pretty badass so i'm going to go ahead and keep that there and then you've got your main uh sort of menu under your name if you click on your name that's going to take you to the profile we'll take a look at that later you do also have the option to uh, purchase premium account here uh, if that's something you'd like to do. You've got the recruiting station. Again, that'll take you to uh, information about how you can recruit friends to get rewards. You've got your inventory. This is a great way of selling things that you don't need or you might not need for some extra money. And you can sell everything from ship components to economic bonuses uh, to um, camouflages and stuff like that. And uh, that's a great way to get a little extra money. Uh, especially in the early going when you don't have a lot of it, um, but you are getting a lot of rewards uh, and you don't need a lot of them. So that's a great way to do that. You'll go ahead and unlock uh, that somewhere about a third of the way to half of the way through the uh, the access levels. Uh, so definitely keep your eyes on that. The captain's logbook is for all you completionists out there. This is going to basically tell you uh, how far you've progressed collecting stuff. So we have flags here uh, and then we have ships and stuff. If we actually go back... To the captain's logbook there we go and we've got ships here so these are all the ships in the game showing you what you've collected what you haven't and you can get information by clicking on any of them give you a little bit of lore as well which is very nice now if we click on the daily rewards this is something that you will also unlock once you get through enough of the tutorials and it'll come up every time you start the game you do have ample time to collect all the rewards throughout the month 
uh, as uh, most games do it. I think this is actually you know pretty pretty nice. They do give you lots of time to to get all the rewards, and you've got some really decent rewards down there, including doubloons and uh, as well as uh, premium time and a super container too. So that's pretty dope. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. There's also news if that's something that creams your Twinkie. And then the next one over, this is going to be your port. So if you want a little change of scenery, we're currently in Hawaii. You can go back to Hamburg where we were a little bit earlier in the video. It's a little too stormy in Hamburg though. I think I like Hawaii quite a bit more, but there's quite a few that you can scroll through and uh, they're always adding new ones, which is nice. There we go. Sunny Hawaii. Beautiful, sunny Hawaii. All right. So that is that. We're going to go ahead and move on to the top center of the screen now. You have divisions. Now, I'm not going to get into super detail here, but this is where you can uh, find friends and basically invite them to a group to play as part of a group together. You've got the main battle button that when pressed will take you to this screen. You can click on the bottom at the bottom to leave the queue if you uh, did that accidentally. And then uh, just to the right of the battle button here, you've got all of the different game modes. Again, as you go through the access levels, you'll go ahead and unlock these. The ones marked in teal are going to be your PvE modes. The ones marked in red are going to be your PvP modes. And then you do also have a practice mode down here if you want to check out some new ships without having to burden other people with your newbiness, as uh, I have had to do m many, many times. All right, finally... On the top right hand corner of the screen, uh, we've got doubloons and credits, which we talked about, and free XP as well. Um, so doubloons, as you guys know, that's the uh, premium currency. If you click on that, it'll take you to the premium shop. You can go buy some more if you want. Uh, there's also credits. If you click on that, it will allow you to transfer uh, or convert doubloons into credits. I would really not recommend doing this, uh, especially once you get into the mid tiers. It's pretty easy to make money in this game, especially with the economic bonuses. You really don't have to do that. Um, then there is also the free XP. You can convert some of the XP that your premium ships uh, have gained into free XP because, of course, everything is already unlocked on a premium ship. So there's nothing to research, nothing to buy. Everything is already there. So whenever you play with a premium ship, you're going to be getting uh, presumably extra experience and uh, that you can then convert using doubloons to free experience, which can be used in basically the place of experience anywhere that experience is used. So when you have ship experience that you are using to uh, maybe research modules or to research the next ship in the line, if you don't have enough of that ship experience, you can always use free experience. So hopefully that helps. All right, let's go ahead and move into a little bit of gameplay. And I'll be showing you guys some UI elements of the, uh, the, the game, how it looks like when you're actually in the game. And then I think that might be a good time to actually end the video for the day as uh, it is getting a little long. Again, uh, if you found the, the video helpful, definitely let me know down in the comments. And uh, we'll put together some more videos like this for y'all. All right, so we're in the Shimikaze here. This is a 10, uh, tier 10 destroyer from Japan. Very cool, and uh, the UI is pretty straightforward here. We're going to head over for Charlie there. Most of the games are going to be in a domination style, so you're going to be going to uh, try to control all of the different points on the map, and that is uh, represented by the A, B, and C at the center there, with the 400 and 400 being the number of points either team has, the left one being your team, and the right one being the enemy team. On the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to see your chat right there, and just below that, you're going to see a visual representation of how many hit points your ship has left, including any status issues like uh, flooding or fires. You have your HP right there, and then you also have the name and your tier right there. You have your radar down here, which will show you which way you and your guns are facing and which direction your ship is facing. And then you also have information about your speed here. So you can control that by using S to decrease your speed and W to increase your speed and quarter elements all the way from stop to full power. And then you also have a reverse gear as well. Now, uh, you do have some consumables on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and press T and slow down to uh, let some of the smoke out so that we can hide from this destroyer that's coming up. And we're going to see if we can take some pot shots at it while I explain what it is on the bottom that we see. So on the very bottom here, uh, we have uh, number one and number two. That's going to be the HE and the AP, otherwise known as the high explosive and the armor penetrating rounds. Now for high explosive, it's okay to be using against smaller ships like destroyers because they don't really have any armor at all. But you do want to start using some uh, anti, uh, anti armor or armor piercing uh, ammunition against uh, some heavier cruisers and battleships because you're not really going to be able to do too much damage unless you just start a bunch of fires, which 
and interestingly enough, the Japanese are very, very good at. So we've almost got this guy dead. And a couple more hits out to do it. There we go. He's dead. Uh, and then right next to that, we've got number three, which is going to be our torpedoes. They're not available just yet. And there they go. Now they're available. So we'll go ahead and just take some pot shots at this cruiser here. Try not to run into our friend, which it looks like we're going to. Sorry, buddy. Not paying attention. This is what happens when you're doing a tutorial at the same time. <laughs> we'll hit Y to engage our engine boost. Now, these different consumables are going to be different for every ship. We're going to go ahead and see if we can drop some, uh, some of our uh, torpedoes here. We'll try to saturate it so it's uh, pretty much going to be really hard for this guy to dodge them. And in the meantime, we're going to keep peppering him. Now, I'm uh, shooting with the left mouse button. And you can also uh, move your camera around with the right mouse button without affecting uh, basically where your guns are pointing. Now, we did a little bit of damage to torpedoes. He did uh, dodge a bunch of them, but that's okay. Go ahead and just keep firing. And the great thing about HE, you're not going to be getting a lot of damage in per se, but you can definitely start a lot of fires. Now, this little icon that you see right here with the little mountain on it and the little yellow uh, stripes, that's basically just telling you, hey, you're about to hit some land. Um, so uh, if you're a noob like me and uh, you ignore the warning, you may very well hit the land. So just be careful. Uh, and you can go into the settings and adjust that. Now, you're probably wondering how I'm turning. That's one thing I didn't mention. That's going to be your A and your D key. And you can see at the center of the screen, we have the rudder moving left and right. And you can see that it's not instant. There's a bit of a delay. Um, so you will have to uh, just be very careful um, when you plan out uh, how you're going to be turning. Because, of course, it will take time just hiding a little selfishly behind our friend here. See if we can get some shots off. And uh, yeah, definitely one thing you got to consider, something that's called rudder shift time. And that is the amount of time that it, it takes for the rudder to shift from one position to the opposite position. So definitely something to consider. Now, on the very bottom of the screen, just above the buttons, uh, you can see that we have some bars that are going from orange to green. Those are basically just showing us which of our guns are pointed in the direction where we're pointing with the middle uh, of our screen here the middle crosshair and which ones are ready to fire so the ones that are orange are not ready to fire or they're off axes and they're not able to uh, articulate all over to the direction that we need and the ones that are green are basically the ones that are ready to fire just keep in mind that the traverse time or the the movement time that it takes for the guns to move from one position to another uh, is measured in 180 degree time and seconds and uh, you can get that information on the main menu It'll be different for different ships. Generally speaking, it's a little faster for ships that are smaller and a little bit longer, or in some cases, quite a bit longer for ships that are bigger. I'm not doing a particularly great job here because I'm about to get hit by torpedoes <laughs> and I'm trying to talk and do all this live at the same time. Let's see if we can fire off some torpedoes without hitting our friend. So we'll go ahead and just saturate some torpedoes in there. He's probably going to die very soon, though. But that's okay. And we've got another friend over here. Another buddy. That's looking like he's cruising for a bruising. So are we, though, if we hit those torpedoes. There we go. On the bottom right-hand corner, you've got a little map. And uh, the great thing about that is that you can make it smaller with the minus key or bigger with the plus key on your numpad. That was a very lucky torpedo strike there. I'll go ahead and take full credit for that because why not? And if you press the tab key, you'll also be able to get an at-a-glance look at how many of the opponent's ships are left and how your team is doing. Now, uh, the uh, bottom center of the screen, uh, basically under the buttons, you're going to be able to see, uh, like, for example, under the smoke, you'll see T. That is the default keybind. You can change those, uh, but that is the default keybind. So if you're kind of wondering, like, hey, what button do I have to push? You can do that, or you can hold control, and you can simply just click on it, and that will have the desired effect as well. Uh, on the top right-hand corner of the screen, you can see we've got some ribbons now uh, throughout the battle. And the ribbons are basically just uh, sort of a, a visual representation of what you have done and how much of it you've done throughout the battle. So you can see um, that we have a defend ribbon. Actually, we have four of those for defending points. Uh, we have target hits. We have aircraft destroyed. Um, incapacitation. So that is when you incapacitate a module on a ship. So if I destroy somebody's rudder, for example, um, that is an incapacitation because it basically slows them down. It changes the way that their ship functions. Uh, we also have, uh, as I like to call, sinks or destroys here at the top right-hand corner of the screen. 
uh, number of torpedo hits. That's also pretty cool. Super satisfying, by the way, to get torpedo hits in this game. Um, the number of times you've cost flooding and so on. You've also got the uh, number of our, the damage that you've done to enemy ships. At the very top of the screen, though, you have a representation as it just disappears as I'm talking about it um, of the number of ships that are left on your team. That is on the left side and on the enemy team was on the right hand side. So there you go. Victory in the Shimikaze. Really, really fun destroyer. I really like this thing. And uh, if you guys want to see some more videos about uh, different areas of the game that you'd like to learn about or perhaps uh, some ship reviews, I'd be very happy to do those. Just let me know down in the description below but that is going to do it for this video i'm sorry it was a little all over the place i know i missed a lot of things hopefully we will get to those in future videos again please let me know down below what you thought if you found the video helpful it really does help me uh with a like from you as well as sharing it with your friends and communities and of course consider becoming a subscriber with notifications turned on so that you don't miss any future videos as i plan to be uh putting up some more videos for world of warships in the future and uh star citizen of course you know we got to keep the uh the old crowd happy as well Come on by the uh, Discord if you haven't already. It's uh, Discord, or rather, uh, yeah, Discord.gg forward slash SSP Gaming. It'll be showing up on screen now, and I'll hopefully see you there as well. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this uh, first iteration of the World of Warships series, and hopefully it's been helpful for you, and I will see you in the next video.